Hey, Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Good morning, good day to all of you. It is Wednesday, April 14th. We do have some things going on, as well as severe weather that is in the south today. As a matter of fact, we do have a tornado probability of 2% uh, in southwest Louisiana and southeast uh, Texas today, mostly around Lake Charles. So there will be some severe weather. So if you look at the video on the top left, you'll see the weather passing through today. That's why I put that up there for you guys. Also, the one right above my head shows you the next 30 days for the next cold air, according to the Euro Weekly model, which shows you a very long range. And you can see that this is going to be the last cold anomaly that will be passing through our country, guys, at least until May. <laughs> Matter of fact, in the next 24 hours, we do have an excessive rainfall outlook, and the heavier rainfall is in this red area. So you do need to watch out for some heavy rainfall throughout these storms for today. And it is going to move over to the southeast. Now our temperatures for the next six to 10 days is gonna be well below average in the south and a well above average on the west. And when you look at your precipitation, it shows that we're gonna have a pretty good drought going on for the next 14 days. For the next six to 10 days, you have below average precipitation in all this brown with heavy below average on the west coast. Then as this cold air moves through for the next eight to 14 days, you're gonna be below average temperatures in all this blue. And for eight to 14 days out, for your precipitation, you can see you're still well below average in the Midwest and the West Coast. There is going to be a drought going on on the West Coast as far as precipitation goes. And you're going to be above average on the East Coast because you do have that storm coming to the Northeast, bringing a lot of rain and some snow, mostly higher elevations. And when you look at the AO, the Arctic Oscillation, you can see that the GFS is still showing that on the 19th through the 20th, mostly the 18th through the 20th, we're still gonna have cold air coming into our country. So if you've never been here before, good morning to you. My name is Mark. <laughs> I usually upload every single day. I've just been having a few things going on around here, not only being sick, but I do homeschool, so my, my kids needed a lot of attention. There is testing coming up, and that is so important. But everything's back on schedule now. Everything's caught up, thank God. So hit that subscribe button, because we are getting into soon to be hurricane season, which I'm showing is going to be early, guys. Matter of fact, all of our seasons has been running either a month late or a month early. And I'm showing by middle of May, we're going to be having problems already. I'm going to show you real quick this cold air moving through our country, as well as the wind chills, which can show you even cold air, so it really will feel colder than it actually is in a lot of places. And starting off early this morning, 7 o'clock Central Time, this is your 12Z, you can see the cold air starting to come in from the Midwest. It is affecting the Northwest as well. They're getting into the 30s, but it is going to start moving into our country soon a little bit deeper. And with the wind chills, especially the higher elevations, but the Midwest is going to feel like they're in the teens, as well as in the mountains, they're going to feel like they're in negative temperatures. So the wind chill is going to make it very cold to be dealing with for the next few days. Now that cold air is going to bottle up for a few days, but when it, by the time it gets down to Saturday, it's going to start being on the move at this point. It's going to start getting northern Texas in the 30s, as well as the Midwest is going to be in the 30s to the high 20s. And it is bringing a nasty little wind chill. With the wind chill, it's going to feel like in the upper 20s. Uh, for Texas. So that's pretty far south as far as the cold air, especially for April. But Midwest, you're going to feel like you're in the 20s as well. It's, it's going to be a very nasty wind chill. And that's according to the GFS. I'm going to show you the GFS anomaly all the way through because the GFS has been the one that's picked up ever since the beginning of this cold air coming in. The Canadian model, GDPS, is also confirming that your wind chills will feel like you're in the 20s as far down as Texas. So it will be cold air that will be coming in. And by Sunday morning, the temperatures are going to start being in the 30s now uh, as far as Texas. But a lot of the country is going to be in the 30s and 40s when this cold air does come in. So it will be below average temperatures for almost everybody. With the wind chills still bringing very cold air into our country. Matter of fact, I'm showing that Texas is going to be feeling like very cold for a few days. And the Canadian model shows that on Sunday that actually the wind chills are going to be even colder than the GFS is showing. It's showing it's going to feel like it's in the low 20s as far down as, as Texas. So it is going to be some very cold air with some very cold wind chills that will be passing through for the last time. The Canadian model is showing that on Sunday you actually have a great chance for as far down as northern Texas to be in the high 20s for your temperature. So there is going to be some very cold air coming through and it's going to be around for a little bit before it finally moves through. When you get all the way up to Monday now, you're still showing that your temperatures are still below freezing as far as northern Texas. New Mexico is in the 20s. But now you're getting into the, the low 40s to the high 30s for the deep south. And I know a lot of people in the south 
they do do a lot of farming. They do do a lot of gardening. So God bless you all. I hope everything will be okay with your garden. Matter of fact, if you want some good tips on your gardening or anything that you're planning for this season, go see Deep South Homestead. He has a great YouTube channel, and he is awesome as far as planning anything and when and where. <laughs> they know everything. So go see Deep South Homestead. That's Danny and Wanda. They are very good people. They will tell you anything you have questions about, anything you're trying to plant. They'll tell you anything that you need to know about what you're trying to plant because they know everything. <laughs> they really do. And now by Monday, your wind chills are going to still make it feel like you're in the 20s, especially for northern Texas. But now the Midwest, especially Ohio Valley, is going to start feeling below freezing temperatures, especially with the wind chill. So this is going to start moving through come Monday. Matter of fact, the Canadian model shows that on Monday that you do have a good chance in the south to get some almost freezing temperatures. It will be in the high 30s come early in the morning, overnight. It will warm up greatly throughout the day, but you do have a chance in the south to get some very cold temperatures coming starting Monday. The GFS shows that it takes all the way to Wednesday instead of Monday for the deep south to be in the high 30s to low 40s for your coldest temperatures. I don't show it's too much to worry about. I don't show that there will be a frost, guys, so you will be okay, but it will be close. But thank God it's not going to be cold enough for that. But with the wind chills, you will feel this cold air as it moves through the center of the U.S. to the northeast. And then by Thursday, you still have some high 30s that's going from the center of the U.S. a little bit into the south, but it's nothing really to worry about, and it will move through very quickly. But the wind chills will make the Ohio Valley, Midwest, all the way to the northeast feel like you're in the 20s. So it will be some very cold air. And the GFS shows heavier than a euro. It shows, matter of fact, it'll be a little bit more uh, for the northeast and more for the mountains. So the GFS does show more amounts than the euro. With your heaviest accumulation being in Vermont, you have a chance for over two feet of snow. Now, this is in the higher elevations, but there is people living there as well. So the main pocket is going to be for Vermont and New Hampshire. So you need to watch out for that snowfall because it is going to be cold enough to where it sticks around for another day or two. As well as the rainfall, this rain is going to really put some storms in the south and it is going to track to the southeast. Matter of fact, this is your rainfall rates for the next 48 hours and that's by Friday. And by Saturday, it's going to be even heavier amounts of rainfall accumulations, especially for southern Mississippi and portions of Louisiana as it tracks to the southeast. And then by Tuesday, you have the whole rainfall amount that has come down. Now you got southern Georgia, you have Florida, Alabama, you have everybody getting in on this heavy rainfall. So northern Florida... You will have some heavy rain coming in, as well as Mississippi, New Orleans, southern Alabama, and southern Georgia. And this, what you're looking at, guys, this is your sulfur dioxide rate. This shows you every, everything that's in the, the atmosphere as far as the sulfur dioxide, which actually comes from the volcano that's been erupting. And it's going all the way from Venezuela all the way towards Africa. And this is going to be a big plume of sulfur dioxide that is in our atmosphere. Matter of fact, if you watch it, you can see that by Saturday, it actually starts moving into the Caribbean. So you need to watch out also for Puerto Rico and maybe even Jamaica because it is coming your way. And this right here can cause problems with your breathing. It can give you a sore throat. It even can af affect your vegetation uh, for what you're trying to grow if you do have gardens, guys. Because this does cause main problems and it does cause acid rain as well. Matter of fact, you can see here that sulfur dioxide affects the respiratory system, particularly the lung function. Uh, and it can irritate the eyes, it irritates the respiratory tract, it increases the risk of tract infections. It also causes coughing, mucus secretion, and aggravates uh, conditions such as asthma. So if you have any asthma or a chronic bronchitis, this rule will affect you. And it can be dangerous if there is high amounts, guys. And there is a high amount that is in the air right now. It's not all over the whole world, but it is affecting a lot of people right now. And if you inhale it, it can be very toxic. It can cause death, it can cause severe irritation of the nose and throat, high concentrations, which is in the air now, from Venezuela all the way to Africa. It can cause life-threatening accumulation of fluid in the lungs, which is pulmonary, pulmonary edema, as well as symptoms may include coughing, shortness of breath, and difficult breathing and tightening of the chest. So it can cause some people with problems if you already have respiratory issues. And this is the volcano, matter of fact, on April 10th, you can see that the volcano was erupting, and that's what's putting all this nasty chemicals in our atmosphere. It even had some eruptions all the way to the 11th as well. So the 10th, the 11th, it's just the volcanoes erupting and putting the stuff into our atmosphere. And it even had eruptions all the way to the 12th. Matter of fact, this volcano by St. Vincent actually erupted before for eight months long. So there, 
We don't know when this is going to stop, but it is putting nasty aerosols into our atmosphere, guys. You need to be aware. And here's a closer look at it when it erupted on the 12th, and it's still erupting. This, it hasn't stopped. So this is still putting aerosols and nasty chemicals, sulfur dioxide, into our atmosphere. And this is going to come into the Caribbean. How far west it goes, it's still too early to find out, but it is strong amounts. Also, I had somebody ask me if I could put the pollen in the forecast, because my just like my wife, she has allergies as well. And we do have the pollen rate. The red is high, the orange is medium to high, with the yellow being medium, to low medium being green and light green. Now I'll go around real quickly so you can see it, and remember that the orange is medium, medium to medium high, and the red is high amounts of pollen. So you can see in your place, in your state, where you at, whether you're in high pollen count, to medium to high pollen count, because there's a lot of high pollen <laughs> everywhere, guys. Uh, it gets more easier as you get towards the west coast, but it looks like the central U.S. to the south U.S. really has the worst as far as this pollen count uh, is, as far as intensity. But you can see it's a lot of pollen going through the whole country. A lot of people, is, especially the central to the south, like I said, is in high amounts to medium to high amounts, especially the northwest as well. Uh, Washington and Oregon, you're in medium high to high amounts. And the southwest, California, uh, New Mexico, Arizona, y'all are in, also in high amounts as well. So you got to be aware if you have allergies, there's a lot of areas that has a lot of pollen going on. It's the southeast, the northeast, the central U.S. and Ohio Valley, southwest, and the northwest. Very high pollen accounts. And that's your brief update to let you know of everything pretty much that's coming pretty soon to our country and the surrounding area because the Caribbean might be affected uh, actually by that SO2 that is coming. So we need to watch out for that actually uh, to see where that goes. But it is great temperatures actually outside. All in all, it is beautiful weather almost for everybody. So please get out there. Enjoy that nice weather, especially if you've been locked up inside. Get out, stretch your legs, enjoy the weather. It is beautiful. Watch out for the pollen. Take your medication if you do have allergy medication. This is your NAM 3K. It will show you storms that's in the south and the southeast as well as the northeast a uh, snowstorm that will be happening. It will be a lot of rain, but it will be a lot of snow for some people as well. Mostly higher elevations. I want to praise our Lord this morning, guys, because it is a beautiful day. God has let us waken up and enjoy another day at life. Amen. God bless you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I want to thank God for taking care of us, guys, and that's all of us, because it all is very intense times right now. So thank you, God, for, for protecting us. Keep us in your strength, Lord, and keep us focused just on you because you're all that matters. Amen. Let's praise our God, guys. It is a beautiful day today. Every day is a good day to praise the Lord. So here's your view of the storms in the south, in the southeast, and the northeast storm that is coming. God bless you all. May you all have a very, very blessed day today. Let's give thanks to our God, which is so merciful. He lets us wake up another day. Amen. Psalm 92. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning, and thy faithfulness every night, upon an instrument of ten strings, and upon the psaltery upon the harp, with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work, I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. A brutish man knoweth not, neither doeth a fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Mine eyes also shall see my desire on my enemies, and my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. 
They shall still bring forth fruit in an old age. They shall bring fat and flourishing. To show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no unrighteousness in him. Amen. God bless you all. May you all have a very wonderful, a very blessed day today. It is going to be very nice weather for a lot of people today. Y'all do have some storms in the south, but it is all in all beautiful outside. Please go outside. And enjoy your day. God bless you all. All glory. Does go to God. God of Jacob. Amen. <laughs> God bless you all.